Asus ups its mini PC line with Intel and AMD H processors, and the PN64 is the first one out of the gate. It's also the first mini PC available to feature DDR5 SODIUM support. Asus with newer tech than Intel? What's the world coming to? This 12500H model features a 12-core, 16-thread processor with Intel XE graphics. It's available as barebones or with pre-built options. Apparently, 32GB DDR5 RAM sticks are not supported, but I didn't have one to test with. I bought the i5 barebones for $800 Aussie. Asus only provides a 1-year warranty, which compares poorly with the Intel NUX 3 years. Inside the box is the power supply and power cord, beer coaster and manuals. Monitor mount and screws are all individually bagged for maximum packaging waste. The PN64 is a bit larger than the old PN50 line, and the plastic build feels much more solid. I think it looks nicer too. Something I don't like is how it's opened. Don't know if it's just my unit, but my bottom lid kept getting stuck when trying to open it. If you buy the bare bones, watch out for the ribbon cable inside. While the board is loose on one side, I still couldn't get it out. The other side just didn't want to budge. I was hoping to check out the new cooler, but after wrestling with it for a while and accidentally ripping out the ribbon cable, I gave up. Luckily the ribbon clamps didn't break, so no permanent damage. The difficulty in disassembling it sucks especially since the CMOS battery is on the other side of the board. That being said, the PN50 was also a bastard to disassemble, so nothing new here. Anyway, adding memory and storage is easy enough. There's an M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slot and 2.5 inch SATA drive bay. Three USB 3 ports on the front, with one being USB-C and also an audio jack. This model comes with dual HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4 on the back. The USB-C also supports DisplayPort 1.4 for a total of 4 displays. On top of that, it also supports USB power delivery, so that's a cool inclusion. There's another USB Type-A and a 2.5 gigabit LAN port. All USB ports are 10 gigabit on this mini. The included 120 watt power supply has a barrel jack connector. A cool new update for this mini line is the ASUS Visual BIOS, which is found in desktops and laptops. You can turn off individual cores, and there are two fan settings, normal and quiet, but that's about it. I fired up Ubuntu, and everything worked okay, apart from audio. Let's unbox the world's first DDR5 RAM Mini. Same problem as NUC 12 Pro. Chrome OS gets stuck on the logo. No difference there either. After a BIOS update and driver installs, Windows 11 was ready for benchmarks. Apparently, you can find the necessary drivers on the beer coaster. I tried placing the Mini on top of it, but that didn't work. In single core, the PN64 gets the mark of the devil, only slightly behind the i7 NUC 12 Pro, around 4.5%. Performance increase from the NUC 11 i5 is 28%. Nice! And in multi-core, it's clear Intel's new generation of CPUs is far ahead of Gen 11. The PN64 came back only 10% behind the NUC flagship. Intel's 12th gen CPUs are so speedy that I'm adding a new benchmark with Cinebench R23. This benchmark runs for 10 minutes straight, a good way to see how the cooling holds up over long stretches. And the i5 PN64 almost matches the performance of the i7 NUC in this benchmark, which also shows in the video encoding test, where there's almost no difference. 3D Mark DX11 shows the PN64 behind last year's 11320H. It's the same deal in DX12. Last year's i7 NUC comes out ahead in both benchmarks as well. The PN64 is nothing special on the graphics front. DDR5 doesn't do much as memory bandwidth isn't the main issue. I wanted to see what the difference is between a kit of DDR5 and a single RAM stick. Almost a 6% drop in DX11 and 12% in DX12. I tested Marvel's Spider-Man with the latest graphics driver and it runs okay. Well, if your definition of okay is graphical glitches during cutscenes and 30 FPS gameplay on ultra low detail settings at 720p. It's okay awesome. The PN64 performs around 20% slower in Forza Horizon 5 than the i7 NUX.
In Hades, the difference isn't as much. Doom Eternal is around 15% slower on average. Valorant runs well on all. And in God of War, the i5 beats the i7 Nuk 11. Yeah, DDR5 power. Emulation-wise, the 12500H can handle most consoles up to the Wii U. Almost every game runs 1080p 60fps. Except Breath of the Wild. I tried a bunch of PS3 games, and most have graphical glitches or crash with OpenGL or Vulkan. Here are the better results. But overall, I wouldn't buy this Mini with the goal of emulating the PS3. Idle power draw is the same as NUC 12, and max power draw was slightly higher. ASUS has had to improve the cooling to cope with the large power increase, but this unit still hits almost 100C like most high powered Minis. Thermal and power throttling under load was reported. So some performance is lost when all cores are thrashing away at a task. Unfortunately, my sound meter died, so I'm doing a fresh comparison with my new one between NUC 12 Pro and the PN64. So these minis are not quiet when the CPU gets stressed. But it all depends on how you use them. You may rarely hear the louder end of fan noise. So the ASUS PN64 brings a big boost to performance on the CPU side for minis. DDR5 is a novelty that doesn't really pay off. But at least it's nice to see the next generation of memory being welcomed into the mix. This mini has gone up in build quality, cooling and price. The one year warranty is stingy compared to the competition and opening and disassembling the unit is much more difficult than it should be. Intel's NUC 12 Pro has a superior metal case, includes dual Thunderbolt 4 ports and triples the warranty, but lacks USB power delivery. In my next video, I'll be comparing the performance of the i5 NUC 12 Pro versus this PN64. Considering they're the same price, it will come down to how much you value the build quality warranty and ports of the NUC against its performance. So while you wait for that video, be sure to check out my review of the i7 NUC 12 Pro, as there's lots of information that won't be repeated again in the next review. Cheers!